Good evening. I'm Cole Hartman, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. The Nebraska baseball team was set to play the College of Charleston this afternoon, but due to inclement weather, that game has been canceled. Now the three-game series resumes tomorrow for a 5 p.m. first pitch and 4.30 p.m. for pregame coverage here on the Huskers radio network. And you looks to take the series tomorrow after their 10-8 extra inning win on Thursday. Turning toward the other diamond sport, Husker softball is in action tonight at Bowen Stadium for their home opener. They are in the second inning with Wichita State, leading one to nothing. Earlier today, a motion was filed to dismiss charges against four Iowa State student athletes in the sports wagering case. The assistant court attorney wrote that the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation exceeded the scope of permitted use of tracking software that detected open mobile betting apps in the Iowa State athletic facilities. The athletes involved are among about two dozen Iowa State and Iowa athletes criminally charged last year. There is no word on how this may affect Husker men's basketball player Aaron Ulis on his season's eligibility. Finally, three games in Big Ten baseball have gone final from earlier today. Purdue fell to number 11 East Carolina, 7-1. Minnesota lost to Sacramento State in California, 7-5. And Maryland took down Bryant in College Park, 8-3. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Hour one of Sports Nightly is coming up next here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. The pump fake by mass, step back three on the way. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Holy smokes, holy cow. The Flying Dutchman with a victory to tie it at 65. Andrews lines toward right, and it's over the head of Medellin and rolling all the way to the wall. Billy on her way to second, not stopping there. The car's relay from short right field is wide of the mark. Billy Andrews with a leadoff triple. Brian Webb with the 3-0 pitch. Drilled into center field. Long run again for Verdusco. Onto the track, looking up, and it is gone. Home run, Josh Terrence. Second home run of the night. This one a three-run blast to right center field, and Nebraska now leads it 9-1. Shelly throws down low. Markowski kicks it out to Jazz. Knocked away by Marshall. Seven to shoot. Six to shoot. Shelly for three. You betcha! Huskers take their first lead of the game with 30 seconds left. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. feel like we ought to play happy birthday tonight because it's the state of Nebraska. It's our statehood day. So the state of Nebraska's birthday today. So ha- happy birthday. Everybody can sing it to you in your car or in your home, whatever you want to do to salute the grand state of Nebraska. So how about that to, to lead off the program tonight? Welcome to the show. We thought we would be coming out of Husker baseball, but the Mother Nature had other ideas in Charleston, South Carolina. They were just at the ballpark. They had done batting practice about 35 minutes before game time, and the skies opened up, and it's going to be raining most of the night. They knew that was a possibility. Nebraska actually asked Charleston, can we go earlier in the day? And you are limited. Schools are limited, believe it or not, by how many, how many school hours you can miss to participate in sports and those type of activities. Nebraska has to be careful of this, on the, particularly on the ball bat sides where you're traveling a lot and playing a lot of weekday games and that type of thing. Uh, and Charleston said, we, we don't have any hours to spare. we got to go after, after 3 their time, even though they moved yesterday's game up to accommodate a basketball game that night. Their staff was working both events. Uh, so I think Nebraska a little frustrated they didn't try to go a couple hours earlier and try to get that game in today, but they didn't. It, they'll play tomorrow night, 5 o'clock Central, and it looks at this point to be just a three-game series. I think Nebraska is going to ask at least, you want to play two on Sunday, uh, to see if they can get all four of the games in. But uh, as it sits right now, today's game is just gone. They'll play tomorrow and then on Sunday. But we thought we'd have some of that. We do have Husker softball. Their home opener going on there in the bottom of the second. They lead Wichita State one to nothing. We're going to have some fun the next two hours. We'll listen in to some of Nate Rohr and Matty Fowler-Burkhardt's call from out at Bullen Stadium. Uh, Huskers 
at the bat in the bottom of the second, one on, one out, and they lead the Shockers 1-0. So we'll have some fun with that coming up a little bit later on in the hour. We're also going to hear from Matt Coatney. Jessica caught up with Matt uh, earlier in the day to preview the Huskers matchup on Sunday at Illinois. That's the regular season finale for the Huskers who go into that game tied for fourth, but they have the tiebreaker with Michigan State. So right now, the Huskers would be the four seed. The Huskers have the tougher game of the two for Sunday. Nebraska at Illinois. Michigan State plays Wisconsin, so they'll be favored to win that game. Huskers will have to win a road game to hang on to the four seed uh, in the Big Ten tournament. But we'll hear from Matt Cotney coming up later on in the hour. Dennis LeBlanc, who's a longtime athletic department in charge of the academic side for student athletes, he'll join us in the second hour. Some really good stories to tell about Husker student athletes and the way they have handled their academics down to the years, and particularly in the fall semester, we'll get let Dennis let you all in on that. And we've added to our nation-leading academic All-Americans. We'll let him uh, lay all that out for us coming up in the second hour. Also, Jessica's Wednesday w women's podcast was with gymnast Kenzie Davis. We'll have some uh, comments from her coming up in the second hour as well. We did not have a show last night. We had Husker men's basketball as they ba battled the Buckeyes in Ohio State and. The four-game winning streak got snapped. Ohio State, and we played this clip for you Wednesday night from Coach Hoiberg. He said they're dangerous because they're pretty good, and, you know, they, they kind of have the pressure of is the coach going to be back or not. They let their coach go two weeks ago. They've got an interim coach. They've beaten Purdue. They've beaten Michigan State, and, and they were tough out. And Jamison battle was phenomenal last night with 32 points. The Huskers had the lead with about five minutes to go in the first half, and then didn't finish the half very well. And that was disappointing to not finish that half and, and then trail by two at the break. Nebraska, I think, had a five, six-point lead and then did, did not play real well the last three or four minutes. And the Buckeyes kind of forged ahead, and then they kind of were out in front of Nebraska most of the second half. Now, I know there's been a lot said about the free throw discrepancy, and there certainly was. Nebraska, seven of eight from the line. Ohio State, terrific, 24-28. They only missed four. But I will say this. Nebraska, Nebraska attempted 33 threes in the game. 33 threes. Well, you're not going to get fouled on many three-point attempts. It happens every now and then. The Buckeyes, 21 three-point attempts. So 12 more shots by Nebraska from behind the line where you just aren't going to draw contact and get yourself to the line. Were there questionable calls? No question. There were. And home teams, and the data I think will back me up on this, home teams will generally get to the free throw line in Big Ten games at least more than the visiting team does. But that, I mean, that is a pretty wide discrepancy. But, you know, as I kind of went back and analyzed it, I'm looking at the box score and I'm going, well, we did, throw, we did fire up 33 threes. That's a lot. We only made 10, so we only shot 30% from the three-point range in the game. And Coach Hoiberg with, on his post-game comments with Kent and Jake just said he thought defensively we were a little jumpy. We were going for ball fakes, that type of thing, which this team has not done. They were so good defensively Sunday against Minnesota that, that last night they weren't as crisp on the defensive end as they were uh, three days ago against the Gophers at PBA. I don't think that's a very harmful loss. Ohio State's a quad one opponent, so that, that doesn't really kill your resume much. The Big Red come home Sunday. They'll play Rutgers at 530, and I think they'll get back on the winning track against the Scarlet Knights on Sunday afternoon. 430 for pregame coverage, by the way, here on the HRN. The women will play at 3 that afternoon at Illinois, 230 with Matt and Jeff for the call of that game. So disappointing. Missed opportunity last night for the Big Red. Thought Jamarcus Lawrence continued his solid play. Jawan Gary just didn't have it. He was great against the Gophers. Didn't have it last night. He went 0 for 6 on three-point shots in the game last night. And it was not a great night for Casey. He went 3-12. of 12 and, and honestly, I thought he took some really ill-advised shots in the second half of that game that were just way too quick, way too far out, and just weren't going to get the benefit of that. So it happens. Buckeyes, are, it's not a bad, bad loss for you. Again, that's a quad one opponent. So I don't think really any damage has been done to Nebraska's resume by by dropping that game last night. All right, uh, one other thing I want to talk about before I get uh, into our first break and we go out and listen into some Husker softball with Nate Rohr. In college football, folks, is about to have some major, and I mean major changes, coming in the fall. And it involves 
technology. We're going to get, it looks like the Ru Football Rules Committee on Friday proposed changes that will allow schools to use coach-to-player communications through the helmet to one player on the field. My goodness, is this overdue. They, they experimented with this in a couple of the bowl games. You know, how, how silly it has been when everybody holds up those giant cards on the sideline. Looks like they're playing poker with these big cards on the sideline, and you got pictures of Cole Hartman or, you know, uh, somebody's favorite dog on the sideline. We're going to get rid of all that stuff. And that, that's going to help with the sign stealing stuff, too, because now a coach can directly talk to the quarterback in his helmet and go, We're going to run XZY5 flat flush, whatever the technology they, whatever kind of jargon that they throw out there. So it looks like that's coming. Uh, the player will be identified. They'll put a green dot on the back of the helmet. That's much like the NFL does. And the defense will get one player as well. The communication will get shut off with 15 seconds remaining on the play clock. So it's not like a coach can be there and go, okay, what's the defense doing? Oh, they just jumped the safety up in the hole. Let's change the play with eight seconds to go on the play clock. 15 seconds on the clock. The, the mics get shut off. You cannot communicate with the player. They're on their own from that point on. I think it's a great rule to be able to do that. I think um, some people are against this. Matt Rule is not. Matt Rule is like, you know what? They have that kind of technology, some of this technology in high school football. And they certainly have it in the NFL. Why, why do we not do that in the college game? So that's one change that's coming to college football. The other one is tablets on the field. If you watch an NFL game, you'll see Patrick Mahomes or pick a quarterback in the NFL, and when they get to the sideline, they get on these iPads, and they'll look over formations that, that from eye-in-the-sky shots during the game, and they can see the all 22 guys on the field at the time, and they go over that type of thing. So that's coming to college football as well. There are going to be 18 active tablets that will be in the coaching booth, sideline and the locker room so this this will be allowed for at halftime they can go through these things right now you can't you're not supposed to have technology in your locker room at halftime to go through adjustments again i think has just fallen behind the time uh with with the these type of new technology changes i know we've talked with trev alberts about this in his last couple of athletic director shows he's all for it and, and i think it's a good move for college football so Communication to one player on each side of the ball from a coach up until 15 seconds on the play clock. Tablets on the sideline, locker room, up in the coach's booth that they can diagram some things and get that in. And the third change, and this is something that Travis talked about multiple times, college football is going to add a two-minute warning in the second quarter and in the fourth quarter, much like the NFL. I think this will help distribute some of the timeouts within the game that we have had to deal with because a lot of times networks will get antsy. They want to get their three or four breaks in in a quarter and they'll take maybe back-to-back -back timeouts. Well, if they know in the second and fourth quarter that they have that guaranteed break with two minutes to go, that maybe that will help smooth the game out a little bit. And if this will not be charged to either team. This will be a this will be an official's timeout with two minutes to go in the second quarter before halftime and at the end of the game in the fourth quarter. Again, I think this is a pretty good rule change for college football. But those are three pretty big changes for the sport of football uh, that look like they're going to be coming through. They came through the Rules Committee today. They'll have to get voted on uh, in a month or so, but a full conference. But it looks like once they come through, uh, April 18th, I believe, is the NCAA Playing Rules Oversight Panel. Uh, that's when it'll be officially stamped. But it got through committee today with those three big changes. So change, change, change coming to college football. And I like it. I like all three of those things. All right. That's what we're dealing with on the program that I a lot to get to here, even though we didn't have a baseball game to talk about after the after uh, the rain out in Charleston today, 402-413-2400. The number, if you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text, that is our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're back, and we'll do a little check-in. This Husker softball, they're up one nothing, top of the third against Wichita State out of Bowling Stadium. We'll hear the golden pipes of Nate Rohr coming up next.
It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Are you ready? It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Power Combo BOGO? Huh? Yes. If you purchase an air conditioner, you receive a furnace completely free. At John Henry's, our professionals want to ensure you are comfortable in your home all year long, no matter what Nebraska has to throw at us. Call today to schedule your free estimate and learn more about the free furnace waiting for you. Give John Henry's a call today. 435-5555. John Henry's Plumbing. Heating and electrical. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And 
It's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more acres solutions for every field. Welcome back to our Friday night show. Jessica's got the night off. We're going to have a couple of interviews, though, that she has conducted later on in the program. Well, Husker softball has their home opener. They're in the bottom of the third. They lead Wichita State one nothing. Nobody on two outs. Let's go listen in on Nate Rohr and Maddie Fowler-Burkhardt. Sammy Bland, the batter, and she takes the first pitch curve outside 1 0. Bland flied to center her first time up. Huskers with a 1 0 lead, bottom of the third. RBI double by Peyton Cody in the first, accounting for the lone run. 1 0 to Bland. Barber deals and misses outside with a curve, 2 0. Talked about the big additions of Cody and Bacon via the transfer market. How about the freshman Sammy Bland and Emerson Cope? Last weekend at the Mary Nutter Classic, they were a combined 9 for 22 with 12 RBI. It was half of Nebraska's runs batted in as Bland on 2 0 grounds past the shortstop and into left field for a hit. So Sammy ahead in the count 2 0, shoots a hard ground ball far to his left that she can't track down. It's now a five game hitting streak for Bland, and she's at first with two outs for Bella Bacon. And that's a great adjustment from the freshman it, from her first at bat where, you know, her shoulders dipped. She got fooled by the rise ball and had just skied one to center field. And it was it was a classic put out that you get from a rise ball pitcher. So that adjustment where she shortened up and hits a hard ground ball up the middle. I love that from a freshman. That's a great approach. That's it's going to make one happy Diane Miller. No doubt about it. Runner at first, two outs. The batter, Bella Bacon. She singled up in the middle and Bacon cuts and misses on the first one. Strike one. Huskers lead it, one nothing. We're in the bottom of the third. Nebraska, one run on five hits. Wichita State still looking for their first base hit of the game. 0-1 oh, to Bacon. Right-hand batter well away from the plate. Barber's pitch. Bacon grounds toward short, ranging left hood. She has it, throws to first just in time to retire Bacon and in the third. No runs, one hit, one left. We go to the fourth. Middle third of the order due for Wichita State, Urban, Hood, and Brown. Three complete at Bolin with a score, Nebraska one, Wichita State nothing. All right, kind of an uneventful bottom of the third for that, but we'll dip, 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 dip in and out of there as the show goes on tonight. Huskers, are the good guys, up one nothing, good gals, I should say, up one nothing after three innings. Nate Rohr out there calling that game. Looks like a pretty good crowd on hand out of Bolin. 52 degrees out there right now for that one. On our text line, Art in Los Angeles said, Greg, who is the new guy that called the baseball game yesterday? He did a great job. Sounds very professional. Uh, it's David Gustafson, and David works at our Columbus affiliate. David has called baseball uh, for UNO and Creighton in the past. I think he's, he did some UNO football when they still had their football program, but uh, one of our great affiliates is Columbus, Nebraska, and he's been over there, and he's going to fill in for me and, and Ben for a couple games. I think he'll do a Maybe a total of about 12 games uh, this year, but uh, gives gives me a chance to get a weekend off here and there. Same thing for Ben, but uh, I'm glad you enjoyed, David. You, you're right. Very professional, good sound, knows the game really well, certainly knows the Huskers really well, has followed and covered the program for years. and. Uh, so that's the voice you'll hear with Ben for the rest of the weekend in Charleston. And then I'll be back with Ben next week for the home opener against South Alabama a week from today for that game. But I uh, appreciate that, Art, for the call coming in there or for the text in there. What else, Auto Family? They're your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. When we come back, I'll sit down with the... Uh, Assistant Associate Athletic Director for the Cornhuskers in charge of academics, Dennis LeBlanc, has some terrific stories to tell about Husker student athletes and how they performed in the classroom during the fall semester. That conversation is next.
Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Bananas are only 39 cents a pound at Hy-Vee. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the Hy-Vee Perks membership. And 39 cents a pound is not just the price today or this week. It's the Perks price every day. With the Hy-Vee Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store-wide every time you shop. And count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for bananas every day, sign up for Hy-Vee Perks. It's free and easy. Some restrictions apply. If you're an unconditional, wholehearted, and ever-so-loyal Husker fan, you deserve to pay like one everywhere you go. With the free f Husker Visa debit card. Fuel your fandom all season and beyond with a debit card just for you. It's free with any checking account from f the bank of Husker Nation. Get your free Husker Visa debit card at any branch or at f slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at woodhouse.com where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hard-working truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Are you ready? It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! 
neighbors. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks. Foundation Solutions, crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and a whole lot more Acres solutions for every field. Delighted to be joined tonight by the Executive Associate Athletic Director for Academics at Nebraska, Dennis LeBlanc. Great to see you. And we wanted to have you on tonight just to kind of brag a little bit about what our student athletes did with yeah. the fall semester. Pretty impressive stuff, Dennis. Yeah, it's an exciting time. I mean, you know, when you, when you consider what our athletes have done in competition in the fall and, and now as we head into the spring with Big Ten championships and then to take a look at that our, that our student athletes recorded the highest grade point average in the history of Nebraska athletics uh, of 3.415. You take into consideration that's between a B plus and an A minus average for 545 students who are competing and representing our university and the community and the playing field, you know, throughout the year, it's amazing. Well, it takes a village, and you've got a, quite a village that you get a chance to work with on a daily basis, and they all take so much pride in helping these student athletes, don't they? Yeah, they, a wonderful group of people that are behind the scenes, and they love what they do. They love Husker athletics, but they really, you know, they, they come to work every day with the purpose of seeing another person work toward getting their education and um, yeah they they are yeah they are amazing what they do the best in the business well incredible numbers on the overall gpa you had some individual teams that i think maybe set records for yeah. that as well correct yeah. so yeah i'll just run down so we don't miss them, any of them we had baseball who again had a wonderful semester coach bolt's doing a great job with that team football i'll come back to football here in a minute men's and women's track and field women's basketball Women's cross country, women's golf, and softball all had outstanding years um, in the classroom. And, and when I said I would come back to football, I mean, you know, we we uh, talk a lot about the culture that Coach Rule is creating in the football program, and and you know, I've had an opportunity to kind of see it from the inside out. And when you take into consideration that we had a we had a football roster of 135, I believe, in the fall and that we ended the semester with 102 of the football players with better than a 3.0 cumulative GPA. Yeah, I mean, That's jaw-dropping. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been here for a long time. There's nothing even close to that. And so uh, that was a big part, I know, for our GPA going up the way it did because you have, you have 135 individuals there. Um, and so, you know, I just want to just – thank Coach Rule for what he's doing with these guys because we, we know we're going to be good in football and, you know, to see what they're doing in the classroom is just amazing. You mentioned Coach Rule, Coach Bolt, Coach Williams, on down the line. All the coaches rave about you and, and your staff. It's a, it's a team thing, right? Because if the coaches aren't pushing it, it's not going to happen, right? You need that support from yeah, the coaching I mean, staff. That, that's a key part of it, and I think that's something that we've always – it's just part of the culture at Nebraska – where the head coaches jump on board. And I think when individuals come into Nebraska, they see that and they, you know, want to be a part of it because they know when they're going into a home of a student athlete and we're trying to recruit them into Nebraska that it's not uh, smoke and mirrors on the academic side. I mean, it's, it's going to happen, you know, that you're going to do well. One of the things that we're so proud about here, and it's on display in the West Stadium, it's on display in the football stadium of the number of academic All-Americans. And I guess we've added to our total, yeah, correct? So th yeah, that's right. So Eleanor Dale, who was an outstanding soccer player for us, was named first team. And then also Sarah Weber, who was a teammate of hers, was second team. And then we were, January found out that Lexi Rodriguez was a first team academic All-American. You know, just to add to her list of accomplishments, during her time in Nebraska. Uh, yeah, so those three added to our nation leading total and now we have 354. And something that our university is very proud of and it displayed in the stadium. Should be. 
Yeah. I mean, uh, and I've had people visiting people who've come in, Dennis, and they come in through the West Stadium to go up to the press box or whatever on a game day, and they they expect to see the national championship trophies, right. and they're going, they're not in here. They're they're going, it's all academic stuff. But I think it speaks to the culture we're trying to put out here as an athletic department. Yeah, and w and when you take a look at the leader of our department, with Trev, I mean, and Trev was that guy, and yeah. he he's not going to talk about it, but. I was fortunate to be here when he was a student athlete, and he was a All-American, won the Butkus Award, first team academic All-American, won the top, now it's the top 10 award, at that time it was the top eight award. And so, you know, Trev is a very competitive guy, and he's not, you know, he wants to win at everything. And that's what he tells us every week in our executive staff meetings, you know, that we, we can get it done, we can do it on, on all levels. And so, um, yeah, it's really great to have that leadership and have someone who carried that out when he was here. Yeah. Again, visiting with Dennis LeBlanc here on Sports Alley on the Huskers Radio Network. There's a move in your future uh, when the big Go Big project wraps up, and that should be this summer. I think you guys will make the move. What's the new facility going to look like from your standpoint? Yeah. So we always need to be by the food. That's really important. <laughs> and so I would like to say that everybody loves to come and see me, but I know that's not true. Um, but you and Jamie Vaughn. That's right. <laughs> So, yeah, so when you walk into the new facility, if you turn to the left, you'll be into the academic area. If you go to the right, you'll be in the, in the nutrition area. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a great setup. And you walk right out the front door and you're right on campus. You're a business major. You're three minutes away from your college. If you're going into engineering, it's a five-minute walk. You want to be a teacher, it's a three-minute walk. So if you want to be a doctor, you're off to Manter Hall, which is a five minutes. So... That's something that we talk a lot about in recruiting is, you know, you're located right in the middle of the campus with this new facility. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just a great location. Fantastic. You mentioned engineering. They opened a new facility this yeah. semester. Business, it's getting old now, but the Hawks building is still gorgeous. Those, are, those have to be nice little carrots to show incoming oh, prospective yeah. student-athletes, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Our, and our, our coaches do a great job of making sure that the, our athletes, the recruits that are coming onto campus, get over into those, those facilities and letting athletes know that if you're coming to Nebraska and you want to be an engineer, you know, whatever that direction you want, might want to go, that we're going to figure out a way to help you do that. Yeah. Yeah, cool stuff. All right, off into another semester. We've got spring break just around the corner. Spring, it, isn't it? It's coming quickly, and then... Of course, on the back side of that, the semester lasts a little longer. We'll lead into to graduation. We, you know, another record we're going to have, we will have 104 graduates this year, uh, which uh, is, is more than we've ever had in a semester. Um, not, not, not sure exactly why, but, you know, we have right. individuals getting their master's degree um, and all, all different types of undergraduate degrees. So that, that's always an exciting time. Graduation will be back in the stadium this year again. Uh, but I, we have a we usually have our reception after graduation up on the third floor of West Stadium, and that seats uh, around 350. We're going to be doubled up, I think, up on the on the upper level with with 104 graduates. So we're expecting probably about 500 people that will come to that this year. Oh, that's fantastic! I know we had one in December as well. There were a handful of student athletes that graduated in December. That's probably your is that your second biggest one it of would the year? Be, yeah. But and, and then and August it, be the third. We'll have yeah we'll have a few in the summer as well. Yeah. How much do you keep up with athletes who maybe leave early to pursue professional sports and yeah. football, basketball, whatever sport? How much do you stay in contact yeah. with these people? Yeah, you know, a lot. And, and uh, Stanley Morgan has been taking some classes. Katie Jewell is continually working with baseball guys. I know. Like Max uh, Anderson. Max, I don't know that Max finished before he left. I no, because he was only here three years. Yeah. Max and Bryce. Um, and, and we're always trying to find, like Cam Taylor Britt left a little bit. Or he's in his final credits to graduate this semester. Great. Um, and I, I'm probably missing a few. Some old timers as well that we'll wait until they finish to, to talk about it. But, but that's, that's a fun thing to stay in touch with them and figure out a way. There's now with online courses, there's ways to be able to do that even if they're not in Lincoln. Yeah. That's always such a great story to tell that somebody had meant that much to them to finish it up and get that degree. Yeah. And some athletes have been out of school for a decade or so before yeah. they get that done. We, you know, Lawrence Pete a few years Lawrence ago. Lawrence Pete, perfect yeah, example. Lawrence was 57. He was very proud to tell people that, you know. And he was a very successful businessman during his time and retired and, 
you know, at a young age and uh, said that was just one of those things he hadn't gotten done, and he promised his mother he would do it. Great. And he did. So. Well, congratulations to all the student-athletes. Congratulations to your staff. They put, uh, I know, hours upon hours upon hours to really help the student-athletes get it done. And they need help. They're they busy trying to get... Yeah. Weightlifting and practice and all those things they do to win on the field, they need a little extra help on the, sometimes. Yeah, it, it, and, and they do. And, and, and yeah, it's, our staff does a great job, and, and, but also just the entire department, you know, with, uh, with everyone kind of rallying around that and, and being proud of the academic success. So Good. Appreciate we'll keep, the Keep it rolling. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Greg. Dennis LeBlanc with us here on Sports Night. Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. More of the show coming up next. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Huskers. It's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Great uh, to ha hear it from Dennis LeBlanc. What amazing stories. Three academic All-Americans and Crypto King pointed this out in the chat to have over 100 football players get over a 3.0 GPA. That, that is absolutely remarkable. That is just incredible. Uh, to be able to do that uh, with this academic staff, and they work so hard, and they're so good with all of our student athletes throughout all of our sports. All right, let's uh, go do another listen in. Since we last checked, Wichita State has found the scoreboard. They now lead two to one. The Huskers are batting in the bottom of the fourth. Nobody on, one out. Here again, Nate Rohr and Maddie Fowler Burkhart. 18th ranked UCLA hammers Michigan 10 0. One and one the count, the pitch to Brook. Curveball bends back over the inside corner, a strike one and two. I'm sounding the panic alarms on Michigan. Uh, they they are, have really struggled offensively to this point in the year. Uh, one run in, in four games, that, that is alarming. Uh, not great, especially these days. One out, no one on. The one, two to Brooks. She swings and pops it up. Straight behind home plate, foul, and it makes it onto the netting and gets stuck. On the cord holding up the netting. Count is one and two. Two one, Wichita State. We're in the bottom of the fourth. One out, nobody on for Brooke Andrews with Canada due next. Count at one and two. Barber winds and deals. Andrews fouls this one off to the right and out of play. Still one and two. Of course, Michigan in year two under Bonnie Full. 
after the glorious run of Carol Hutchins at the helm of that program. Michigan was kind of the house money of the Big Ten Conference in terms of softball, but last year they missed regionals. They've struggled offensively last year. They lost their best players from last year's lineup, and they're having an even tougher time this year. Now the 1-2. Andrews sprays this one, fouling out of play to the right. Still 1-2 and two to Brook. There's something just not right at Michigan right now. And, and I don't know how they can pull out of the tailspin, but they're going to have to in a hurry if they're to make it back to regionals. They are currently 10-8. and eight. Now the 1-2. It's a rise ball too high to Brook, 2-2. Two and two. Go, and, go ahead. And when you look at who's coming in the conference, I mean, you just sure. you want a strong Michigan program. To, to help kind of balance out that Big Ten when you're bringing in three West Coast teams that are very, very tough. No doubt about it. 2-1 Wichita State. We're on the bottom of the fourth. The pitch to Brook. Curveball outside and good at bat from Andrews to work it from 1-2 and two to 3-2. And, and when you think about how a conference is perceived, which of course matters when they select the NCAA regional field, how the brand names are performing really forms the basis of that perception. Full count pitch, Brooks swings and pops this one up, right side out of play, three and two. So when the school that more or less has defined Big Ten softball for 30 years is struggling the way they are, frankly, it hurts the rest of the conference. Michigan will host Nebraska in April. 3-2 pitch. Brooks swings and misses for strike three on a curve down and away from her. Fifth strike out of the game for Chloe Barber. Two outs, bottom of the fourth. It was a 10-pitch at bat, but Barber wins it. 2-1 Wichita State, bottom of the fourth. Base is empty, two outs for Canada. Wisconsin, by the way, split a doubleheader with Utah Tech. Lost the first one 6-5, won the second 4-0. Here's Kaneda. She snapped a six-game hitless string with a single to right her first time up. First pitch curveball from Barber. Bends over the heart of the plate for a strike. It's 0-1. Here's some hopeful Big Ten news. Maryland leads Oregon 4-0. That game bottom of the seventh inning in Eugene. Of course, the Huskers. Took out the Ducks last week. Now the 0-1. Canada rolls ground ball to short to third. Wong has it and throws to first in time. And the Huskers go very quietly 1-2-3 after Wichita State snatches the lead from them. We go to the top of the fifth. Barnard, Sidlacek, and Urban due to hit for the Shockers. Four complete at Bolin. Wichita State leads Nebraska 2-1. And this is Big Red Softball. There we go. Update from Bolin. We'll try to check in again next hour and see if the uh, news is better. So the Husker Bats, after putting some pressure on early in the game, as Nate just said, went pretty quiet there in the fourth inning. All right, 402-413-2400. That's the number if you want to be a part of the program. Uh, we do have a caller. Let's uh, stay in Lincoln and chat next with Ted. Good evening, Ted. Welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. I just wanted to compliment Dennis LeBlanc and all the people that are doing all that, that academic work with the student athletes. I uh, was both a doctoral student teacher and a uh, adjunct professor at the university and had numbers of student athletes in my classes. And Dennis and his crew were very good about communicating with the faculty, making sure we knew who was in our class, tracking their progress and asking us if there's anything that they needed to do to support our effort to teach them. So it's, it's really just a, a finely tuned machine. That's a great perspective, Ted. I, I thank you for sharing that, and that's good to hear that there is that kind of cooperation between academics and athletics. I'm, I'm not sure that's that the case everywhere. So I think that speaks to the university folks here and also the people that, that like Dennis and the athletic, athletic department that make sure that they're checking all those boxes. I, I appreciate your perspective on that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good, good uh, comment from Ted there in Lincoln. John in Omaha on our text line uh, said, so glad to hear about the proposed rule changes in college football. I've long thought 
but they should have pretty much the same rules as the NFL. Wish they would go to two feet inbounds on passes. Interesting. Right now in college, you just need to get one foot down. Uh, pros, it's two. Uh, I wish they'd also, uh, and the ability to get back up off the ground if you haven't been touched, but I'm getting greedy. <laughs> Thanks for all you do, John in Omaha. Yeah, in the NFL, if you catch a pass or you stumble and fall, and like, remember the days of touch football? If you're not touched while you're down, in the NFL, you can get back up and go. And so, like, somebody might make a leaping catch and go to the ground, and if they're not touched, they, they, the play's not over. They can keep going. In college, it's not. If you go down, you're down. I don't know, John. I, I, I could go either way on that, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't dislike either side of that thing. And I like the fact, I do like the fact that there are a few different things between the two sports. I don't want it to be a carbon copy. I'm, I'm glad that the hash marks are wider in college than they are in the NFL. Maybe some people don't even realize that. But, yeah, they are. They're narrow in the NFL, so they have more wide side of the field. They have more room to roam, where in college... You can have a short side and a wide side, where in the NFL it's basically the same. Uh, I do like that change, uh, that, that there's a difference in that. Uh, the two feet inbounds, that's certainly an interesting thing. I mean, it makes it easier for us to call that when you can just see one foot down. Where they, a lot of times it, it would maybe slow the game down more in college. Did they get that second foot? Did they drag that toe? Did they pull that thing in before they, uh, they went down? So maybe that would slow the game down more. Uh, in the NFL. One thing I, I wish, man, it drives me crazy. And if you listen to our broadcast in the fall, you probably hear me. I jump on this three or four times a game. The spotting of the football, I think, is atrocious in college football. I mean, we'll, we'll be watching a play, and it'll be kind of down in front of us. And it's like the ball carrier goes out of bounds at, say, the 48 yard line. And we look up, and they put the football to 46. You're like, he clearly went out at the 48. Why, why is he two yards back? I just think it's really gotten bad in college football. I know the NFL is talking about kind of going to a, uh, I don't know, for the lack of a better term, kind of a radar uh, spotting of the football where it's kind of electronically done so that it's really more accurate. I think that would be great if you have the technology to do that and it can be made available at a reasonable cost for colleges and schools. Why not? Why not go to that? Um, uh, you know, I think in baseball, we're watching the Husker softball team and uh, we're hoping to hear some Husker baseball earlier today. Uh, I think we're going to eventually get to electronic strike zones where you kind of take the umpire element out of it uh, to call that accurately or not. But uh, Sam in Omaha said, did you see the NFL maybe? This is perfect, Sam. You and I are thinking the same thing, that the NFL may be getting rid of the chain gang. They already uh, have the pylon video cam at the first down marker. Thoughts on that? I, I love it, Sam. Again, going back to the, I just think the spotting of the football has gotten bad in college football. And you're right, the NFL has gone to a pylon cam where they place it down where the first down needs to be made. And their replay people can instantly go to it and look and see if that guy, the ball carrier, got to that point or not. And I think those are things that can quicken the pace of the game up a little bit. So I think we're all kind of on the, on the same page with all of that. So appreciate all that. Appreciate Ted's phone call. Hope you enjoyed our interview with Dennis LeBlanc earlier in the hour. Boy, we're having some fun here on a Friday night, aren't we? Still 2-1, softball in the fifth. Shockers are at bat, have one on, one out. We'll go listen in some more in hour number two with our good friend Nate Rohr. We're also going to hear from Matt Coatney as he previews the Huskers' regular season finale on Sunday against the Fighting Illini in Champaign. And we'll play you part of Jessica's uh, Wednesday Women's Podcast. This week she talked to gymnast Kenzie Davis. We'll have some of that interview for you coming up in the second hour as well. Man, having some fun here on a Friday night, aren't we? We'll uh, dip out of here for a little top of the hour break, come back and finish off hour number two um, here on Sports Highly. Don't go away. Come on back. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
TNL Irrigation Company knows their way around a field and across it into the corners. And even through storms, TNL engineers are constantly working on solutions producers need, like the new Gooseneck Cradle Corner System Attachment. It greatly improves corner span stability to tackle steep terrain and stand up to high winds. If you're looking to upgrade your corner system or add on new, call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL, like no other. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers.
Good evening. I'm Cole Hartman, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. The Nebraska baseball team was set to play the College of Charleston this afternoon, but due to inclement weather, the game was canceled. The series resumes tomorrow for a 5 p.m. first pitch and 4.30 pregame, 4.30 p.m. for pregame coverage here on the Huskers radio network. NU looks to take the series tomorrow after their 10-8 extra inning win on Thursday. Turning towards the other diamond sport, the Husker softball team is in action tonight at Bullen Stadium for their home opener. They're in the fifth inning with Wichita State, trailing 4-1. to one. Earlier today, a motion was filed to dismiss charges against four Iowa State student athletes in the sports wagering case. The assistant court attorney wrote that the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation exceeded the scope of permitted use of tracking software that detected the mobile, open mobile betting apps in Iowa State athletic facilities. The athletes involved are among about two dozen Iowa State and Iowa athletes criminally charged last year. There is no word on how this may affect Husker men's basketball player Aaron Ulis on this season's eligibility. Finally, three games in Big Ten baseball have gone final from earlier today. Purdue fell to number 11 East Carolina 7-1. Minnesota lost to Sacramento State in California 7-5. And Maryland took down Bryant in College Park 8-3. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Hour 2 of Sports Nightly is coming up next here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. The pump take by mass, step back three on the way. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Holy smokes, holy cow. The Flying Dutchman with a victory to tie it at 65. Andrews lines toward right, and it's over the head of Medellin and rolling all the way to the wall. Billy on her way to second, not stopping there. The car's relay from short right field is wide of the mark. Billy Andrews with a leadoff triple. Brian Webb with the 3-0 pitch. Drilled into center field. Long run again for Verduzco. Onto the track, looking up, and it is gone. Home run, Josh Karen's second home run of the night. This one a three-run blast to right center field, and Nebraska now leads it 9-1. Shelly throws down low. Markowski kicks it out to Jazz. Knocked away by Marshall. Seven to shoot. Six to shoot. Shelly for three. You betcha. Huskers take their first lead of the game with 30 seconds left. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. We're back. Final hour of the night. Final hour of the week. Sports Alley. Hope uh, you're ready for a big weekend. How about March is already here? And we're one week away from... Setting the clocks for, right? How about that? Crazy. Uh, about to that time. So we're going to start having some daylight uh, when we're on the air for the program. Love, love that time of year. As Cole told you, no Husker baseball as it was um, rained out today in Charleston. They'll, no word whether I think Nebraska would like to try to play a doubleheader maybe Sunday. Uh, but I don't know if they've gotten confirmation of that from Charleston. So um, we'll keep monitoring that but they are set to play tomorrow night game will, will now be game two of the series five o'clock central 4 30 for pregame coverage ben mclaughlin david gustison on the call this weekend they had a great call yesterday that six five rally huskers were down five to one going to the ninth inning they scored four runs to tie it and then got a go-ahead run on the top of the 10th and got the uh, victory in game one of that series chris and grand on and wanted to know about what's going to happen for the rest of the series I think the plan right now is just to game tomorrow and a game then on Sunday. So the four-game series may get turned into just a three-game series, but I do know I think the Oscar coaches are going to at least ask the Charleston coaches whether they can um, play a doubleheader Sunday. Nebraska chartered back there, so they don't have a commercial flight to catch. They would have a little bit more flexibility on when they could return home. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what, if the two sides make a decision tomorrow. But as of right now, just a game tomorrow and a game on Sunday to wrap up the series. Tough one last night for Fred Hoiberg's Huskers in Columbus. 
They get turned back by the Buckeyes, snapping Nebraska's four-game win streak. Coach Hoiberg said at his presser on Wednesday, and we played that clip for you Wednesday night, that the Buckeyes were a dangerous team. That's a pretty good basketball team. And I know we, we handled them pretty good in Lincoln, but that was the game that Rink, Ma Rink Mass could not miss. He had 34 in that game, and that's hard to duplicate that, and he didn't. Last night he had 14 and 12, played pretty well, but that's 20 points less than he had uh, in the game in Lincoln back in January. And C.J. Wilcher was on fire in that game as well. He had 16. I think C.J. ended up having eight last night. Uh, so between he and Mass, they had 50 points in that first game against the Buckeyes. Quad one loss. That's not going to hurt the resume. Lenardi came out with his updated projections on ESPN today. Nebraska still on that 8-9 line going to Memphis, playing Mississippi State, according to Jill Lenardi. So that game had no effect at all. Now the Huskers will get ready for their home finale. It'll be senior day at PBA Sunday against Rutgers. 5.30 for tip, 4.30 for pregame coverage here on the network. Last home game. For Casey Tominaga, last home game for Josiah Alec, last home game for Boogie Coleman. And I think C.J. Wilcher is also going to get introduced. C.J. can come back. He's got that extra year to go, but I think he's going to – he's planning on graduating. So I think he just said, out. Oh, let me do this. Remember Derek Walker, I think, had two, maybe, maybe, maybe three senior days at PBA. So it's not a done deal that C.J. Wilcher is not coming back. And so don't panic if you're at the game. Why, why are we introducing C.J. Wilcher? That's, that's not who we want to uh, – we want to get him back for another year. There still is definitely a chance to, uh, to do that for C.J. coming back for next year. Well, Brian Ferragrino from Omaha has been chosen as Sunday's contestant for a putt for a Porsche. Brought to you by Porsche of Omaha. If Brian makes the putt on the court at halftime, he will win a 2024 Porsche Macon. If you can be the next contestant, uh, oh, no, I guess I can scratch that. There's no more regular season, so that's the last one. Brian Ferragrino is the last contestant this year. Brian, go make that thing. Would you go roll that full court link putt in there and get you a Porsche? That would be fantastic. Cool stuff. All right, not going well at Bullen. 6-1 uh, now, Shockers, top of the fifth. They have the bases loaded, one out. Let, let's go ahead, Cole. Let's go ahead and listen in and see if they can get out of this, this jam they're in here in the fifth inning. Nate Rohr and Matty Fowler Burkhardt. Second makes the catch to the second out of the inning. So a great pitch there by Olenski to get Wong to pop up for the second out. Not only to get her to pop out, but to keep it in the infield so mm -hmm. you don't have a, a chance for the runner on third to tag and go home with, with just one out in that situation. So. Great job to Olenski. She worked ahead in that situation, uh, had a great changeup to set up that sequence. So a really, really good comeback pitch there. Addison Barnard, the batter, and Olenski's first pitch changeup dots the outside corner. Strike one. Barnard started the inning with a fly out to right. Talon at third, Seaton at second, Nelson at first with two outs. Now the 0-1, Barnard takes up and away, ball one, we're even at one. We are in the top of the fifth inning, 6-1, Wichita State leads. The Huskers scored in the first, the Shockers a pair in the fourth, four here in the fifth. One and one to Barnard. Olenski deals. Barnard swings and lines it in the left field, it's down for a hit. In to score his talent, Seaton to third and holding, but it's an RBI single to left for Barnard to push it to 7-1, Wichita State in the sixth, in the fifth. Eighth RBI of the year for Barnard. Base is still loaded with two outs. The batter is Taylor Sidlacek, who drew a walk her first time up this inning. She's 0 for 2 today, a fly out to center, a pop up to short. Olenski steps on. The lefty's first pitch, Sedlacek takes a curve up and in, ball one. Sedlacek is the 11th batter to come to the plate this inning for Wichita State. Eight base runners this inning for Wichita as they've pushed the lead to 7-1 in the fifth, the pitch. And that one swung on and blasted deep down the left field line, but well foul. Strike one, we're even at one. It's been mostly station to station for Wichita mm -hmm. State, so 
that was a big hack right there, and it kind of got a rise out of the crowd because it feels like that's the only thing that's been missing from Wichita State is they haven't had a massive hit that's cleared the bases. It's been mostly station to station, which still with the separation and the score, it doesn't give you much, uh, you know, anything to feel good about here, but it, it could be worse, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, it could be. Count is 2-1. and one. That pitch missed outside to Sidlacek. Two outs, bases loaded. The two on from Olenski. A changeup drops over the outside corner. Called a strike two and two to Taylor Sedlacek. Huskers need to stop the bleeding right now. 7 1 Wichita State. We are in the top of the fifth. Two outs, bases full, five runs in for the Shockers. Olenski steps on. 2 2 pitch. Sedlacek takes a screwball outside three and two, and now the merry go round starts. Seaton at third, Nelson at second, and Barnard on at first. The wind by Olenski, her 3-2, changeup, swinging a ground ball up the third baseline, snagged by Gray, she takes it to the bag in time, ahead of Nelson to force her out to end the nightmare top of the fifth inning. But not before Wichita State posts five runs. They do it on six hits. No errors, three left on. The Shockers have stranded eight through five turns at the plate. They've also pushed seven across the plate. We go to the bottom of the fifth. About time for the Husker bats to wake up. Felix, Billy Andrews, and Cody do to it for Nebraska. We have played four and a half innings with a score, Wichita State seven and Nebraska one on the Huskers radio network. All right, so not going so well. This is game one of four out there this weekend for the Huskers. 15th-ranked Missouri is in town as well. So Nebraska will play two against Wichita, two against Missouri. Uh, this is the opening game of that weekend series. We'll try to get out there one more time before we wrap up the hour. When we come back, earlier in the week, Jessica got a chance to catch up with Matt Coatney to preview the Husker women's season, regular season finale Sunday against Illinois. We'll have that conversation coming up next. A few drinks at home after work, a couple of hits at a party with some friends, over-the-counter drugs for a minor illness, a new daily prescription, and you're not quite sure how it makes you feel. It doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If it impairs you, driving becomes deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Let's face it, nothing makes you look older than you really are than thinning hair. But what if you could not only increase your hair count, but promote new hair growth without surgery, without drugs with potential side effects, and without a prescription from your doctor? Well, now you can, thanks to a breakthrough new supplement called Hair Grow. Provided by New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Europe. Hair Grow is now available in the U.S. Only Hair Grow contains Tokogaya a powerful antioxidant that has received a U.S. patent. Multiple clinical studies show hair grow is safe and effective in promoting new hair growth. In one study, 95% of the patients using hair grow saw increased hair count. Don't lose more time and more hair. Try hair grow today to feel and look your best. Just go to newnordicusa.com or visit Walgreens or Amazon to purchase. Look younger and feel more confident with hair grow by New Nordic at newnordicusa.com. When you're clocking out and happy hour's already started. But... You're clocking out and happy hour's already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. 
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the kino parlor, is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks. Foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Things that impair you come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are the shape of beer and liquor bottles. Others look like cigarettes but aren't cigarettes at all. These are the things we know impair us, the things our parents warned us about. What we're not always aware of is our new prescription or the over-the-counter medicine we picked up just for allergies or a bad cold. See, it doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If you are impaired, driving is deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door. Powered locally at Cenex. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. We now welcome in the voice of Nebraska women's basketball, Matt Coatney, the Huskers. Uh, coming off a big win over Minnesota, they've got one final game left in the regular season. It's a big one at Illinois. Coat, thanks for joining us. Jess, I love being on with you. I can't believe we've reached the end of the regular season. It's what's fast. So fast. Hey, the last time we had you on and we were chatting with you, it was going into the final four game stretch. You said they needed to win three out of four. Well, they've already won three out of four. So, uh, but but there's still a lot, a lot a lot on the line in this final regular season matchup for the Huskers at Illinois. Yeah, there really is, and they control their own destiny for a double bye into the Big Ten tournament, a win, and they're in and. Uh, you know, it, it, they could still get that double pie with the Michigan State loss. So um, it's been a great run for Nebraska. I think they're playing their best ball of the season. And uh, it's it's certainly been a goal of this team to win all four of those games. So even with the Michigan State loss, I think this team wants to close out uh, with four straight wins here. And, you know, they're, they're playing their best ball of the season. You and I have talked a lot about the bracket projections and all of that, but – that being said, with what's left and what the Oscars could do and where they're projected right now, how much room is there for them to improve a seed, move up, and, and maybe, again, the projections are what they are, but get off maybe that 8-9 eight nine, eight nine seed? 
Yeah, I, I think you want to get off the 8-9 because if you win in the 8-9 game, you're going to play one of the top four teams in the country, and that's not what you want to do. I think Nebraska can actually play their way up to a 7. I think a 6 is probably unlikely, but they could probably get to a 7 if they beat Illinois on Sunday, win their first-round game in the Big Ten tournament, which is probably going to be against Michigan State no matter – uh, what happens, especially if Nebraska gets a double bye, Michigan State likely will be their opponent. Uh, then I think they they certainly would be in a position to get a seven. I, I, I don't even know if they make the Big Ten championship game if they could get to a six. Obviously, if they won the Big Ten tournament, I, I think it's a different story. If they, if they won the Big Ten tournament, I think they could probably be a six seed in the NCAA tournament. So, they would have some wood to chop, pretty difficult road to do it. Uh, I think that winning two more games might get them to a seven. Well, uh, you, you had mentioned they're starting to play their best basketball. What's gone into that here over this stretch? A couple of things. The lineup, I think. Amy Williams was trying to find some more offensive production. You know, her team is, is really good defensively, leading the Big Ten in rebounding. But, you know, teams have, have realized – that you know, if you shut down Alexis Markowski, you kind of force Nebraska to hit threes, and Nebraska had some very slow starts in games, especially from the three-point line. So putting Logan Nisley in the lineup, uh, a couple of things happened there. She has proven herself to be good enough defensively to earn that starting assignment, and she's hit big shots, uh, especially um, in the win against Purdue. So. Um, that kind of frees up the passing lanes for Markowski and makes the offense run uh, a lot smoother. Uh, the other thing is Jazz Shelley is playing with a lot of confidence. I don't mm -hmm. think we can underestimate what it means having her grandparents here and her mom here from Australia for this last stretch of the season. She, she's playing with a lot of confidence right now, a lot more free and easy. And I think those are just a couple of things that um, have – have made the Huskers be playing their best ball of the season right now. Absolutely. Okay, so Illinois up next on Sunday, as we've mentioned, and this is a team that the Huskers have faced back in January, 56 to 48 win. You talked about it, Jeff Grease talked about it. This Illinois team is a scary matchup just because they, they have the potential to be a really, really good team. So I guess tell us about the matchup and, and what we could potentially see out of the Illini on Sunday. Scared back in January, Jeff Grish and I have said consistently, when are they going to figure out that they're Illinois? Because last year, uh, Shauna Green came in and took over a program that was just absolutely abysmal and turned them around, put them in the NCAA tournament. Really was the talk of, of NCAA women's basketball. Shauna Green got a lot of push for national coach of the year. Basically the same players. And uh, they really struggled in the early part of this season. They've kind of got some of their footing back right now. Really good guard play with Genesis Bryant and Makaira Cook, who are just tough to deal with. Smaller guards who are quick. They like to get to the rim. And then on the inside, Michigan State transfer Kendall Bostick is a kind of back-to-the-basket post that reminds you of your classic Big Ten post. And uh, she's tough to deal with. And then Adelia McKenzie is one of my favorite players in the league. Uh, she's tough, a good rebounder, comes off the wing, can shoot the three, good defender. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be senior day uh, hmm. for the Illini, and they're still playing for some postseason possibilities. So um, they, I think, are the scariest team in the league. You look at their record, and it's not coach speak, and it's not drinking the Kool-Aid. Um, they've been very, very good as of late, and I think it's going to be a dandy game on Sunday. Okay, so what are going to be the big keys for the Huskers to uh, come out of there with a win? Well, you don't want to get behind early, and that's something I think uh, is the reason that Logan Nisley's in the lineup. You want to make sure that you punch Illinois in the mouth early on on their senior day. You don't want Illinois having momentum on their senior day early. Keeping Markowski out of foul trouble, knock on wood, hasn't been a problem this year, but that's always going to be a key because her rebounding numbers have of late have been ridiculous she's you know it, it, it's if you don't it, if you don't see her with 10 rebounds at least by the half you think something is wrong I mean her her play has been extraordinary and then knocking down three-pointers Nebraska is a team that plays much better if they hit early threes if they hit early threes it stretches the floor it opens up offensively for Markowski and so 
those would be the things I'd be looking for for the keys to the game with Illinois. What's the status of Darian White looking like? Day to day. And, you know, she sublexed that knee and missed a game. Uh, and then she came back for the Iowa game, looked pretty good, looked really good uh, in the game against uh, Northwestern. And then in uh, practice and before the Minnesota game, kind of retweaked it. So what, what we're told right now is it could be great today and not so good tomorrow. And I think she's just going to have to live with that through the end of the season. So we'll find out on Sunday morning. It really is kind of that tricky of a knee anybody who's ever had a knee injury knows sometimes if there's no significant damage and you know what she's going to need is a couple of months of just rest and not the constant pounding of of sliding and doing everything you do playing basketball but she's day to day we hope we have her for sunday well, it's uh, about that time of the year we start talking those postseason awards. Greg and, I, Greg and I have had a couple of debates here on Sports Nightly. Think that Natalie Potts pretty much is uh, locked up freshman of the year for the Big Ten? Yeah, I think so. And I think it, the major reason is she got on the radar very early. I think Grace Graholski from Minnesota uh, made a pretty good run at it. But then Natalie, or Maddie Kroll's defense on Graholski, the two times the Huskers played Minnesota, uh, really kind of eliminated her. I think uh, Mary Ashley Stevenson of Purdue will be in the conversation. So will be Rashenda Jones. But I don't see uh, really any way that Natalie Potts isn't the freshman of the year. Seven times she's got the freshman of the week awards. And uh, just all the coaches I've talked to, they've been very impressed with, with her play this year. So I think she's a prohibitive player uh, favorite for that award. And how about Alexis Markowski on the first team? Uh, all conference team. And, uh, yeah, if she isn't, they should get rid of the award. I mean, she's <laughs> been at the top of the conference for double doubles all season, leading the conference most of the year and rebounding. Um, but her game has improved quite a bit from a player who was an all conference player before that. And I know she's got the respect of media and then obviously the coaches from around the league. Probably the most consistent player in the league, other than Caitlin Clark this year. She's only had one game in which she didn't scoring double figures. So I think book it right now. She's a first team all Big Ten performer. I love it. I love it. You also got to love that this time of year, you're not sitting here sweating it out on the bubble, knowing that the Huskers have done what they need to do to uh, punch that ticket. I feel pretty good. But like Jeff Reese and I always say, you're not in the NCAA tournament until you're True. in. I would say if, ne True. if Nebraska spits the bit at Illinois, and then loses their first round game in the Big Ten tournament. I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, then we'll get me a towel because the sweat's going to come back <laughs> out. But um, aside from that, I, I do think Nebraska is pretty solidly in the NCAA tournament. Don't really like their seed. I think, you know, an eight is probably a tough, tough thing. But getting in the dance is important, and we'll worry about the seed. All that being said, hey, there's still a lot to play for for this Nebraska basketball team. Well, yeah, there's a lot to play for. The double buy in the Big Ten tournament is a big feather and a cap in this league. And then potentially winning the Big Ten tournament, which would take an extraordinary effort. But if you get a double buy, you only have to win three games. You don't have to win five, like the teams that are playing in the first round. Improving the seed in the NCAA tournament and then doing some damage in March. Yeah, it's a fun time of year. Going dancing is, is a lot of fun. So there's a there's still a lot to be played for in this season it's been a fun year for husker women's basketball absolutely all right matt cody appreciate your time we'll look forward to you and jeff grish being on the call on sunday three o'clock tip they'll be on the airwaves 2 30 pregame for you right here on the huskers radio network coat thanks for your time enjoyed it jess thanks for having me on Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're back with more of the show coming up after this. This statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. When it comes to my lifestyle and diet, I don't always make the smartest choices. Touchdown! Woo! Hey, how about another round and some more chips? But when it comes to taking care of my liver, I do make one very smart choice. Active liver tablets from New Nordic. I used to have real issues with my liver. And at my last checkup, my doc was concerned about my numbers. But since adding a once-a-day active liver tablet, my gut's better, I feel great, and my doctor's happy. 
I ask a lot of my liver, so the least I can do to say thanks is a daily dose of Active Liver. Active Liver is one of many award-winning health products from New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Scandinavia. Purchase at Amazon.com or for a volume discount, visit NewNordicUSA.com. Available as a tablet or delicious sugar-free gummy. Protect and help your liver the easy and effective way with Active Liver at Amazon or NewNordicUSA.com. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. Hey, Mom. Yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay. I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's being well supported by a provider who understands your health interests and goals. It's ensuring you are well connected to a team of caregivers and specialists. It's feeling well cared for by having someone you can turn to who sees you for you. That's the power of being well matched. And that's exactly what CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match does. Meet the provider who is right for you at myprovidermatch.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. Cow chip throwing. Or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at CenexHometownThrowdown.com. Cenex, powered locally. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, the, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today, and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at woodhouse.com where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. 
This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. They've gone to the seventh out of Boland, so 7-1 Wichita State. We might have a final before we get off the air here tonight. Well, this week on Jessica's Wednesday's Women's Podcast, she had a chance to sit down with Husker Women's Gymnastics performer Kenzie Davis. Here's that, inf- here's that conversation. So one of the things people might not know about you, um, you've been a big part of this program for, for several years, years, but you've battled a pretty serious health condition throughout uh, really your entire gymnastics career, right? Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about the scoliosis, how it came about, and, and how you have battled, I guess, throughout your entire gymnastics career? Yeah, so they found the scoliosis when I was 14. Um, I had taken some falls on bars, and I actually went to go see just a chiropractor and for my initial visit they gave me an x-ray and i had just a little curve at the time and uh, we just kind of kept an eye on it but it grew significantly over my teenage years um, as i continued to grow and i'm kind of taller for a gymnast i would say Um, so at this point it's about 63 degrees and um, i had to have one of those hard shell back braces you know to kind of stop it and that did work but eventually when i stopped growing you know, I could ditch that. And so it just continued to progress. And um, yeah, it creates a lot of problems for me, honestly. My hips are completely misaligned. So my legs have a lot of issues um, kind of that run down my leg, my lower back, my upper back. Everything that I do is not symmetrical. So even simple tasks or skills that would hurt a normal person's back or body that pressure kind of distributes not equally in my back. So um, just one wrong landing can kind of flare it up for a while. And I mean, actually, a couple of doctors told me to just kind of be done before I even got to college. Um, but there was one doctor who I stick with now who kind of told me to just keep going, that I wasn't going to make it worse or hinder myself more. It was just a pain tolerance. And since then, I've had at least five successful years in my career. So. Um, I think that kind of just goes to show my grit, but it's, it's not been easy at all. I mean, there's times I've had to take a step back. I had to retire an event completely. I used to do beam, but um, it was just a little too much as I got older. And so even being in the position I am now, I'm grateful every single day, and I'm just trying to make it here to the end. Um, but, yeah, it's a lot of maintaining. People might be wondering why. Why go through that to still be able to do gymnastics? Because it's hard on your body as it is, and then to battle scoliosis on top of that. What what kept you pushing through it? Um, I just had big dreams and big goals. And yes, I had back pain prior to college, but I knew that my story was not over yet. I knew I was meant to come and um, just had a lot of goals, honestly. And I tried to take it year by year. After sophomore year, I had a little scare because I didn't know if that would be the end or not. I started dealing with some like numbness in my leg and weird kind of pinched nerves, but we handled that with some cortisone shots and injections like that to maintain it, and it got better. And as long as it's not irritated or flaring up, it's pretty manageable. It's just kind of every once in a while when I take a wrong landing, but. Even then, I knew, like, okay, I guess if I can't do it, that's fine. But if there's even a little chance, like, I'm going to keep going until the end. And I just didn't want to end my time yet. I knew I could do it. I knew there was things I could do to maintain it. And I wasn't going to give up that easily. <laughs> was it something, though, mentally you had to work through knowing that, you know, you, you, do, you did want to be on all four events and you wanted to participate, mm-hmm. but you had to respect and understand your body and what you could and what your limitations were on top of that too did you did, was that something you had to work through yes absolutely um last year that's actually what spiked kind of some of my struggles last year my junior year i was doing vault bars and beam and i had big goals and i'm a hard worker and i hate having to step away but um on beam like i could not go on any longer because i couldn't do like any event and so in that case to compete at all i really needed to make a decision um and my body ultimately made that decision for me i mean it wasn't negotiable um i had to step away from everything uh in october towards the end of the year and i started just back on bars and then 
by December, I was able to add in vault and then it was time to compete like that right away. So I never had time to step back onto beam. And uh, this season I was, you know, blessed enough to be able to rest on vault a couple of weeks, but same thing. I mean, that's, that's really hard for me because I want to jump at every opportunity I have, but I'm kind of looking at it like it's a marathon, not a race. And to get me to the end and get me to postseason where I think I can have a big influence on the scores and consistency, that's more important to me. Um, but it's not easy. I mean, I, I'm very upset that I can't just do everything all the time like I used to, but that kind of just comes with the sport. There's a shelf life, you know? So trying to be mature about it in that manner and just understand that, like, I'm doing the best I can. Absolutely. It's also the, a good example of knowing your role and wanting to embrace your role within a team. I mean, for any sport, any athlete, you know, you, not everybody can score the 30 points, but for you to have to understand, okay, this is my role, and, and embracing your role, it seems like you've stepped into that and have understood, hey, even though I can't contribute like I want to, I can really do my part where I can. Yeah, and the first experience of that, the first week I took off vault uh, was when we went away to Maryland. And that's where I you know, was able to match my career high again on bars, first event of the meet. And I knew I had one job, one bar routine, and I just knew I was gonna dial it in did that and then my role didn't stop there. I mean, trying to rally the team together for the whole rest of the meet is what I mentioned earlier, part of the reason why I came back at all. I wanted to be able to be there for my teammates and know that although I'm not actively on this event, like I'm here for you and whatever you need so that you can do the best routine for us as a team. So what's next? You have to have surgery, right? Um, after the season? Yes, my surgery is scheduled for middle of June right now. So um, I'll graduate in May and move my things out, head home for a little bit. And yes, yeah, surgery bound, I have been for years. It's always been that whenever you're done with your career, whenever you're retired, and it's always seemed so far away. I can't even believe it's here right now. Um, I'm looking forward to it though. It's gonna be a pretty hefty recovery and I'm gonna need all the help I can get from my family. Um, but I know that my quality of life will improve and yeah, I mean, it's going to be, I'll have two rods in my back with a ton of screws and be in the hospital a couple of days and kind of get back to walking and lots of walking, I hear, and up and down the stairs. But it'll be a bit of time before I can really exercise or like lift things like a normal person. Um, but I'm hoping I'll rebound quickly. I mean, my body's strong. But yeah, that's, I mean, after season, it's finishing spring semester of school, graduation, and then that's next on the list for sure. You will knock it out of the park. What would be your message to, you know, a little young girl that maybe is told they can't because of certain, a certain condition? I mean, just wanting to compete, though, and, and finding a way to be able to do what you love. Yes, I think, you know, that's a great, that's a great question. I think I've done this over and over again in my career. If you want something, you really will make a way for it. I've had a ton of just even minor injuries that happen spur of the moment in the competition. And if you really want something that's important to you, I promise you, you can do it. Like you can find the people who are going to support you and back you up. And of course, in a safe manner, like never do something that you can't, but don't listen to what people say if you can, if you can't do it, because the only person like that knows your body best is you. And I knew I could do it. And here I am like a whole college career down and that never would have happened if I just kind of decided I couldn't either. So definitely with respect of other people's opinions. But yeah, I mean, don't let other people tell you what you can and can't do. Like if it's inside you and you know you can, then you can. Mm, that's awesome. Well, a um, couple meets left at home inside the Devaney Center. Uh, you guys got postseason ahead as well. But with uh, your career winding down, I think it's been documented, your legacy, both parents uh, came here and competed here. What has it meant to you to wear the Husker uniform, to wear that, that leotard and represent Nebraska? Yeah, it's meant everything. I mean, I have been able to have a ton of opportunities through being here at Nebraska, and it seems like every year and every month there's something new I'm able to achieve, and I'm so grateful that this is where I ended up. I know it's meant to be. I am a legacy with my parents, and I think at the same time, I was also able to kind of make my own name for myself, too. I don't feel like I was confined in any place because of my parents. So um, looking back at my career, like, I have no regrets, and I don't think it could have gone any better or any differently. I think everything turned out how it's supposed to. And yeah, wearing the N on my leotard means everything. It really just does. 
So what, what does this team need to do to start, um, you know, peaking at the right time here at the end of the season? Yeah, it's our confidence. I mean, my coach says our only team we need to worry about beating us is ourselves. And I think, you know, we can compare ourselves to other teams in the country or other scores, but if we focus on our own journey, um, we'll, we'll make it happen. And I think we need to have that um, unwavering confidence in ourselves and look back at our meets and look back at things that have gone well and just build upon that. And I think once we do that and we realize our potential, we'll be going through the roof. Wow, courageous young lady there in Kenzie Davis. Great story. That's part of that podcast, and that podcast series sponsored again by our great friends at Emeritus. And it is posted, and you can go listen to the whole interview. It's really, really fascinating stuff from Kenzie Davis. Husker Jim will have a home quad coming up on Sunday at the Devaney Center. So if you want to go check that out. It's about to go final, unfortunately, at Boland. 7-1 Shockers, bottom of the seventh. Huskers down to their last out. They do have a runner at second base, but a disappointing home opener for the Huskers. Two games out there tomorrow, 1.30 against the Shockers again, and then they'll play Missouri at 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So tough opening weekend with some really high-quality opponents out there. We'll try to get you a final before we sign off at the end of the hour. Also, winners and losers coming up next. It's just Cole and I in the house, so we'll get through that fairly quick. If you want to text us your winners or losers, you can certainly pop those in there as well. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. And it just went final at Bowling. They picked off the Husker base runner at second base. 7-1 the final of that game. We're back to wrap up this little party show. Next. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. Cow chip throwing. Or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. There's no community like a Cenex community, and that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. We're back inside the Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the premier, the Midwest premier, John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp back with you. Final few minutes of Sports Highly here on a Friday night. Time for our winners and losers of the week. 
Cole, it's just you and me. So start, lead us off. Well, I, I suppose I'll take my time on these. Uh, my winner goes to Nebraska baseball's Riley Silva for his. Uh, well, actually, you know what? I'll just have Ben McLaughlin tell you why he was my he was my winner of the week. Here's the first pitch to Silva. Riley swings and grounds one through the right side. That's a base hit. Scoring is Evans. Around third and scoring is Hughes. To third goes the pinch runner Huft. And Riley Silva comes through in the top of the ninth. And we are knotted at five. So that was my winner. Nice. And then uh, we go on to uh, steal it in extras. You know, he's... Um, I like him a lot. He's got good speed. He's covering the outfield really well. He can bunt. And he's come up with some timely hits for this team early on. Folks are going to really like to see him. Huskers have their home opener a week from tonight against South Alabama and hope to get uh, some more games in in Charleston if they can dodge the raindrops. But I'm a big fan already of Riley Silva. My loser. Mm -hmm. I, you know, since the All-Star break in the NBA, I've kind of been watching a few games here and there. I don't really have a team. Uh, maybe the Mavs. I don't know. The, my loser is two teams, the Wizards and the Trailblazers, who did not win a game in February. Wow. The only two teams in the league. There's such a discrepancy between the good ones and the bad ones in the NBA right now. And it's, wow. It's tough to watch. But. Are they tanking, do you think? Because you know, that's, that's always the worry that some teams tank so that they make sure they're in that lottery and they get a better... I it's, don't know. It, I don't want to cast any... Uh, allegations, but it kind of seems like that. Yeah, I mean, then I and then the the Pistons are four and thirty six. Something just gross. And they've had some high picks in recent years. And that Kate Cunningham they yeah. got with the yeah. number one pick a couple years ago, and they're just not any better at all. Oh, it's it, the league is it's weird right now. I but. did watch uh, on my flight to Phoenix last week. I watched the Bad Boys, the doc about the Pistons from the late eighties into the nineties with. Isaiah and Bill Ambeer and Rick Mahorn and that whole group. It was really good. I enjoyed that, uh, that documentary, as, as you mentioned, the, the Pistons. All right, my winners are these new rules for college football. I think they're going to be fantastic. I think it's way overdue to get some communication in the helmet. The technology has been there for a decade, and college football has just ignored doing it. I think we can do away with those funky, silly signs that are just distracting, and we get rid of the Michigan sign-stealing type thing. I think it's a great thing to happen for college football, and also I think it's great that they're putting tablets in the hands of the coaches on the sideline. What are we doing? We don't need to live in the dark ages in college football. Modernize, keep modernizing your sport. I think it's a great move, so that's my winner this week. Are you good with those sayings? Are you good with those moves? I, yeah, I am. I'm 100% good with modernizing the game, especially if it's not, it's not ruining the integrity of the game. It's just making it easier and less prone to any uh, mischievous, you know, sign yeah. stealing or, or things like that. So Absolutely. My loser, I'm going with Duke and their forward, Kyle Filipowski. Now, this was the guy that they said just got creamed and roughed up in that court storm by Wake Forest last Saturday. Might miss the rest of the season. <clears throat> he played last night. I mean, you talk about milking that thing. Duke milked that thing, turned court storming into a topic on every show all week long, and this guy had a tiny little ankle sprain is all he got out of that whole thing. I think it's fine to talk about coming up with protocols and getting visiting teams off the floor. Everybody should have a plan for that. If that comes out of it, great. But we had a lot of people talking about arresting people that ran on the court, completely outlawing it, complete big-time fines. We lost our minds on that whole thing, and this kid went out and played the next game for Duke. Crazy stuff. All right, that'll put a wrap on the, the uh, show tonight. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Husker baseball tomorrow, hopefully, weather providing in Charleston with a first pitch at 5 o'clock. Enjoy your weekend. We're back with you again on Monday. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com teachers.
Other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation is known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. 